welcome to the best and worst of October 2013 episode of Why So Serious. Here we have the lovely Brogan Hayes from um, movies.ie. And the very handsome Rory Cashin from entertainment.ie. And Brian Lloyd from Sunday Business Post and Spin. And Mary... Mary? Mary? She's not here. She might be. You don't know. It's a big screen. Yeah. This actually, she works at Brown Bag, so she, we're not even here. She's, she animated this whole thing herself. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. The third best uh, movie from October 2013 was... Captain Phillips. Tom Hanks, directed by Paul Greengrass. Very good, very good combination. Tom Hanks plays a captain whose name is Captain Phillips. Shockingly. And he is in charge of a US cargo ship that's kind of... S- I nearly said swimming. Uh, sailing up the coast of... Uh, Africa. Africa. And it gets taken over by Somali pirates who just want like all their cargo and money and stuff. But it all goes awry because and tensions heighten and kidnapping and yeah, US Captain Army Phillips gets has, involved. And yeah, he has different ideas about what the Somali pirates should do. Based on a true story um, from a couple of years ago. and Was also made into a hijacking. Yes, that's true. That's very true, which is a Danish film, which mm. came out earlier this year. Um, I think maybe because it's based on a true story, you're invested in it a little bit more. Or it could just be because Tom Hanks is so gosh darn likeable. And the fact that Greengrass directs with uh, proper, uh, really tense oh, hands. So it's tense. Normally, like, I really liked Born Supremacy and Ultimatum. Yeah. But I thought it was too, like, jitter you know? Yeah, yeah, finding, yeah. Finding yeah, some yeah, of it was, yeah. But he was really good at establishing the geography of all the shots. You knew where everyone was all the time. Mm. And that really helped with the like, like scenes where you're like, where, what's happening next? And where the people are coming in? Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was long. It was it's over two, two, hours, two yeah. I think it was like 2.20. And like some of the bits in the middle could have been lost. And I thought the backstory given to the Somali pirates was just kind of bullet pointy. As in, It was, yeah. It could have been fleshed out a little bit more because yeah. otherwise it was very close to just demonizing them. But, but aside the, guy, from that, the guy who played the main Somali pirate, I'm not even going to try and insult him by pronouncing his name, he was outstanding. Mm-hmm. He held the screen against Tom Hanks every scene that he was in with him. He was absolutely outstanding, and it's amazing for a first-time actor to do that. Yeah. Uh, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, too. Great. Woo! The third worst of... Uh, <laughs> of October 2013 was... Thanks for sharing. Every time I Great cast in this one. Yeah. Ruff, Mark Ruffalo, Gwyneth Paltrow, Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. Pink. Yeah. Does she count as great cast? Uh, Dan Fogel. Is that his name? The, the, the uh, I thought his name was Josh something. Josh Gad. That was him. Not Dan Fogel. That's, no. a, that's a different guy. No. Um, um, basically, three or four or maybe all of them recovering sex addicts trying to deal with everyday life, basically. So... If you think of Michael Fassbender in Shame, this is him like a year later when he's gone through sex rehab and is trying to just get on with his everyday life. Sadly, yeah. they tried to make a romantic comedy out of it. Yeah. And this is not a topic for which romantic comedy should be based upon. No, I don't think addiction really lends itself to the romantic comedy kind of style. This could have been like... It, there's potential here for it to be a super dark dramedy, and there was maybe. A, there was about 10 minutes in there where it went super dark, and you're just thinking, this is going to get interesting. It was very twee. Yeah, and like, there was no normal people in the film. Like, I know the film's about addiction, but like, there should be someone there as like a baseline. Is like, this is someone normal. So they're relating to like people with all these different problems. Yeah. And it was very uh, male aimed as well. Like I know Pink was in there, but she was like the only one that we got to know. The rest of them, I think, there were like three or four just men, and yeah, it was all yeah. Very and Gwyneth look, what, look what the men are exposed to. It's uh, constantly women in bras and. But even Pink's story wasn't properly fleshed no. out. Really, it was just like, oh, I felt bad about myself, so I had a lot of sex. It's like, what? We've all been there, like. Yeah. So um, Pink though gave an amazing performance. She did, yeah. I thought, you know, for someone who is known as a singer. Her videos are great, but who had never really done a strong acting role before. She'd done no. voice and stuff like that. She was really good. The first scene she's in is really kind of moving. Yep. Yep. Yep, surprising. Yep. Very forgettable and all too missable. Yeah. So I would give it four out of ten. Yeah, I'd go three. So three and a half for thanks for Yeah, it's the second best Woo! of October 2013 was... Thor, The Dark World. Thor, The Dark World. 
Connor's Thor 2 was a great joke that I heard. <laughs> Like oh, I said, no. I went to see Thor. <laughs> went to see Thor 2, Gunnar's Thor 2. <laughs> Set minutes after the events of Avengers Assembled, Loki... I'm going to just... Because I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Well, spoilers. I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay. Loki is like... It's on the trailer, right? Loki's been imprisoned by Loki's Anthony Hopkins. Gorgeous. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> King Odin played by Anthony Hopkins. He's in prison for all his war crimes on Earth. The massive colour fee Bifrost bridge has been repaired, so Thor is bringing peace to the other realms... But Natalie Portman has discovered some odd science goings on on Earth that has released the Dark Elves, headed by Christopher Eccleston's Malik Keith, I believe his name is, who wants to destroy all of matter. Far cry from him as the ninth regeneration of the Doctor. I guess. Yeah. Um, th- uh, bad stuff first. The bad guy is shit. You have Loki in the wings, and we have this really pointless bad guy speaking just solely in those languages that don't exist and it's very underdeveloped so it's not great the other one is Natalie Portman spends most of the film asleep <laughs> that's kind of awkward <laughs> uh, and, just, and the rest of the time she's just kind of damsel in distressy floating about like someone else help me oh, I'm no, not, I can't actively rubbish. do anything for myself Aww. but there is two niggly points in an otherwise hugely entertaining film uh, I can't imagine anyone else now except for Hemsworth and Hiddleston playing those two roles um, they really move things along. You can see them setting the gears in motion for every future Avengers, Avengers movie. Avengers uh, there's a fantastic cameo in there, which I'm not going to spoil. There's Don't two spoil. mid, no, there's one mid and one very end credit sequence, oh, both that, of which yeah. are worth staying for. Action sequence is great. It's very funny, very well directed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So it's it's as good for me as Iron Man three was. Ooh. So that would be a That's high praise. Eight and a half out of ten. Well, yeah. I'm going to give it a preemptive nine because I just you know I love these movies. So yeah. yay, preemptive nine, eight and three quarters for Thor: The Dark World. The second worst film of October two thousand and thirteen was Closed Circuit. Mm. Not an actively <sighs> terrible idea for a film. No, like I think the idea, what they had originally, and the film they ended up with, were two very seemed different two very different things. Like Cloud Circuit, I imagine, has something to do with the CCD, CCTV cameras in London, because London, I think, is the highest CCTV camera to person ratio in the world. Yeah, well, the opening sequence is all the CCTV cameras taking up the whole screen, so yeah. It, yeah. And it, it shows a bombing in central London, mm. and Eric Bana and his former... Lover. Lover slash mistress, maybe. Slash. It's never fully defined. Bad breakup. Yeah, uh, Rebecca Hall are assigned to the defence team for the man who is being accused of being the terrorist who blew up that bit of London. Yeah. His former defender committed suicide, or did he? I hate to lie. And uh, as they get deeper and deeper into the case, they discover that their lives are in danger and they're uncovering things that the government don't want them to find out. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Interesting idea, um, but never never utilised properly. Um, Directed by John Crowley, who we know from Intermission. And is anybody there? Uh, Which I loved. Which I haven't seen. I loved Uh, it. Jim Broadbent's in there as well, but he may as well not have been. (laughs) Kieran Hines is in there as well, but the second he shows up on screen, you're like... I, I know already, exactly I what's going to happen black, here. Your, your character arc yeah. is pretty much just there. Very <sighs> just beige and yeah, forgettable. And there's no and chemistry at all between Banner and Hall. Like none. for two former lovers, there's nothing no. there at and all. Not even hatred. I mean, no. you'd stand for hatred, but there isn't. The first scene that they have together, they're no, like... No, there should be a lot of like, I hate you. I hate you and I'm never going to kiss you again. Do you hear me? But the first scene they have together, they're like, so you were, so, you were a bit mean to me. Yeah, well, you know, I'm kind of mean. No. Yeah. Uh, and the CCTV camera stuff is never properly used again. Like, it pops up now and again, but it sh- it really should have had a kind of... What is that film where people were watching everything? Vantage Point. Kind of that, and also Sliver, but, like, uh, over a cold city and less sex. Or more sex. I w- that would have helped a lot. Yeah, I think that would have helped a lot. Wouldn't it's have been just, quite so bored. It's just forgettable, beige, bland, blah. Bad. Yeah. Uh, three out of ten. I'm going to go two out of ten. Oof. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Best movie hey, of October 2013 is Enough Said. Come in. Really sad because nobody really seems to be going to see this film. 
and I just want everyone to go see it because everybody it's should see this film. It is absolutely just it's like a little hug and yeah. then a little bit of a oh you let me go and I'm a bit sad to, to just hug me again. Uh, yay! yay. Uh, and it's the last movie of the late great James, James Gandolfini, Gandolfini, and it's nice to see a more warm side to someone we, we consider quite a angry man. Yeah, he's just like a little teddy bear. In quite a, a big teddy bear, actually, well, yeah, with the, some severe nasal breathing positive. <laughs> yeah. Um, he and Louis, Louis, Julia, Louis Dreyfus, uh, who you should know from Seinfeld or Veep, or, well, if you don't know either of those, go away Leave. and watch those no. and then come back. Yeah. Uh, they're both recently-ish divorced and their two teenage daughters who don't know each other are heading off to college. She heads, Julie Louis Dreyfus heads to a party hosted by Catherine Kinnear. Keener. Keener. Yeah. And runs into James Gandolfini. They kick off a relationship, uh, but there's complications. The relationship between uh, Louis Dreyfus and Gandolfini is so warm and natural. It just really feels like they just happened to wander in front of a camera while they were having the chats. Mm. It's just, I mean, there's even a bit where she takes her shoes off and in the middle of a conversation, he changes it to how much he hates feet, and it just feels so much like a normal conversation yeah. that you would have, um, which is just, it's just wonderful. The chemistry between them is, I mean, it's not all sparks flying and passion and ro- all that stuff, but it's just warm and it feels... It's very real and yeah, very mature. Yeah, and very easy. They're very easy in one another co- oh, bleh, 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 one another's company. So, Funnily and acutely written. Yeah. Um, Nicole Holof Center, please forgive me, Nicole, if I've pronounced your name wrong. I'm sorry. You're a talented lady. You're a very talented lady. We can't lady. wait to see what you do next. Didn't Hopefully. she do some of Parks and Rec? Did she? I think so. I would actually go for 10 out of 10. I, there were, I did have a couple of little things that bothered me, but the overall film was just so sweet and warm that I just have to stand by. 10 out of 10? So we are, 9.5 out of 10, and I've said one of the best of the year, go see if it's still in the cinema near you. Yes. Uh, worst film of the year, which is something you definitely shouldn't go see in the cinema near you. Is it worst film of the year? Burn the cinema. Is it first worst film Worst film of the, of the month of October of 2013. <laughs> May it be worst film of the year, stay tuned. Oh, gotta figure out what it is now. Baggage claim. Christ. <laughs> It may actually end up it being may, one of the worst it may. Uh, Paula Patton. Who I love. She's beautiful. Oh my God, I just love her so, so much. She's so gorgeous. Is a girl who can't get herself a man's. So, um, your man from the OC. I, Adam Brody? Yeah. And her other, of course, large African-American girlfriend. Can I fix my way? <laughs> oh, you hold my gold. Hold my gold. Um... They decide, because they all work on an airline, to set, try and set her up with her exes. So they, like, go into the security system, see who's flying where and when, and put her on the flights with them in the hopes of finding her a man's for her little sister's wedding. It's really just diabolically bad, um, mm. to the point where it was actually almost funny. Like, there was an early-ish <laughs> sex scene in it, and it was so God, I've over that the out. top and cheesy. Oh, and no, I remember. Awful. Oh, God. And, like, really oh, bad, Jesus. like... It's like soft it, core lighting and just, like jazz music. It was like oh. it fell out of a Southern American telenovela from twenty years ago. It was Shocking. awful. And Paula Patton's better than this, and it has like a fairly decent cast in there, like a Tay Diggs and uh, D- Digimon Hanso. I can oh, never yeah, m- yeah, remember his name. Yeah, yeah. It actually got to the point in the press show where everyone was going, "Oh, for God's sake!" And we were all roaring, laughing at everybody else's reactions. If you want a good laugh have a couple of pints, go and see it, because you will actually be in stitches. Bring a whole gang of friends. You have to do see this one in a group. But if, if you know, you're sober, this is sexist and feminist. Oh, my God. It's all, so... Some, no, it's not feminist. Anti-feminist. Yes. It's anti-women. It sets back the women's live movement by about 400 years. If you ain't got a man in your life, ladies, you are just not you're, worth talking to or about. No. So. Worthless. Absolutely worthless. You are defined by the man in your life. Awful. One out of ten. Zero out of ten. Whoa. There's nothing redeeming about this film. And you're full of extremes this month. I, I am a woman ten of extremes. Ten or zero. Arr. Arr. So that was the best and the worst of October 2013. Yes. Uh, the three we're looking forward to seeing in November 2013. You got it. Are Philomena. Philomena. Steve Coogan. Dan Judy Dench. Directed by Stephen Frears. Very heavy story. Handled with a relatively low touch yeah lovely yeah it's really probably good probably in cinemas now yeah but I'm watching this so yeah. go 
Go, Go watch that. Right now. Go. Gravity. Which, by the time you watch this, will we'll be, be in cinemas. cinemas. Uh, Go see it in IMAX 3D. Yes. You will never, probably never the hear Cine me... The Cineworld IMAX 3D. Thank you, you Cineworld. Thank you, Cineworld. You'll Yoni probably Cineworld. never hear me say that again, but go and see it in IMAX 3D because it's entirely worth it. Yeah. If you have seen the trailer and think you've seen it all, you have not. No. You have not. You've seen stuff from the first, like, 20 minutes yeah, of the film. Yeah, exactly. And the very last one was... The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Mm. I quite enjoyed the first one, actually. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was marvellous, but it was enjoyable. This one, I think, has a more suitable director, Francis Lawrence, who did I Am Legend and mm. Constantine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, they fix the, again, shaky cam problem Ugh. that uh, has plagued some films lately. Um, but Jennifer Lawrence. But Jennifer but Lawrence. Did you see her hair? No. She has a pixie cut. She's cut all her hair off. She looks fucking amazing. Is this in the film? Or is no, like in real life. It was like an Evanston. on... She put it on Instagram the other day. The film, yeah. But she's amazing! We... We agree on that. Yeah, so that's what we're looking forward to in November. Tune in at the end of November slash start of December for... End of November. Let's let's be punctual on this one. <laughs> well, <laughs> it depends, doesn't mm, it? Mm-hmm. Uh, but before then, we have a screening of the next Why So Serious cult calamity... Calamity? <laughs> cult? Comedy. Comedy classics. Classic. Uh, the date is yet to be confirmed. The time, location and film itself is yet to be confirmed. But check in with the Twitter and Facebook accounts to get all the deets. It'll be released in the next few days. Few days. And it's also keep an eye on YSoSeries.ie because we'll be n- announcing it there too. So um, until then. Until then. That's been Brian. Yay, Brian. That's been Brogan. Yay, me. This has been me, Rory. Yay, Rory. And this has been YSoSeries. Yay, YSoSeries! Yay! Yay!